What's up, YouTube? I'm Pokemon Challenges. I'm the best Nuzlocker in the world. With over. What's up, YouTube? I'm Pokemon Challenges. I'm the best Nuzlocker in the world with over 3,000 hours of Nuzlocke experience. And today, I want to be taking a look at. I attempted my first Pokemon Nuzlocke by Jaden Animations. It's a beautiful animated story of how they attempted their first Nuzlocke challenge. I'm going to be taking a look at it from my perspective as a professional Nuzlocker, as an experienced Nuzlocker, and giving my takes on how I think they handled their first challenge. Let's take a look. Within the Pokemon community, there's a set of self-imposed rules you can add to the games to make them more challenging, called oh, a really? Pokemon Nuzlocke. You can only catch the first Pokemon you run into per route. If a Pokemon faints, it dies, and you can't use it anymore. And you have to nickname your Pokemon to get more attached to them. That means True. if you aren't careful, you can technically lose a Pokemon game under those conditions. I've wanted to do a Nuzlocke for the longest time. I've started a couple in the past, but never actually got to finish any because busy. But today's the day that all changes I, I get it dude <laughs> i feel like most people i i see a lot of people in my chat who tell me about a nuzlocke that they started i see very little that tell me about a nuzlocke that they finished just putting that out there you know i'm looking at you guys in chat right now you guys know who i'm talking about i decided to make a video on my first full attempt at a pokemon ruby nuzlocke let's see how it went after breaking free from the back of the moving truck my mom stuffed me in and introducing myself to the neighbor Brendan, the kid that I always thought was a monkey said that he heard screaming up ahead. Professor Birch is getting mauled by a level 2 Poochiana, so I let his Torchic out and she scratches the crap out of it. He Hell gifts yeah. me Torchic for rescuing him good and pick. I name her Teriyaki. My first good pick, good nickname. Honestly, Torchic, probably the second best starter to pick up in Hoenn. I think Combuskin is pretty strong. You always want to have a fire type on your team, right? And fire types are usually pretty hard to get. Not as hard in Hoenn. Um, there's a couple. There's a couple of uh, routes to get. On. However, the best starter for a Hoenn Nuzlocke is always going to be Mudkip, because uh, Swampert is insane, and there's no Grass Gym or anything. The only thing that threatens your Swampert, Swampert, is a uh, cool trainer Brook. Is <laughs> one one trainer that has a Rosalia, and then like your rival. Uh, that's the only Grass types you're going to run into. First Pokemon. Walking up the route more, I run into Brendan, who challenges me to a battle, where Teriyaki uh -oh. proceeds to also scratch the crap out of his Mudkip. Good yeah, job, you Teriyaki. You're two for two. Doing great. Professor Birch gives me five Pokeballs, and the Nuzlocke has officially started. I walked back up to catch my first Pokemon, and... So this is an interesting point. Um, a lot of people start their Nuzlocke rules when they get their Pokeballs. I actually don't. I count death before I get Pokeballs, because I feel like otherwise it'd be too easy to just grind before you get Pokeballs and not worry about it. But starting at what? But like the, the the encounter rules for when you get Pokeballs still count for my rules. But that's a very minor point. I think doing it like this is completely fine. Ran into a Zigzagoon. All right, not the best, but I can work with this. You know, I think we're gonna have a really awesome adventure. Dude, so Teriyaki one shotted Zigzagoon with a critical hit scratch, Ooh. but whatever. Continue yeah, you always got to be careful of that. Um. Always got to be mindful of your crit range, your Pokemon's crit ranges, and your enemy's crit ranges. If you want to be a consistent Nuzlocke, if you want to beat the harder games with the harder rule sets, you're going to have to get a feeling for these damage ranges. And that's like the number one tip, honestly, for getting better at Nuzlocke, is just do a lot of them and gain a feeling for damage ranges. If you do that, you'll be fine. A little bit, all right, guy. Route 102 is right around the corner, and that's where I was able to catch Corn the Sea Dot. Look at us, couple of- Okay, so someone in chat just said not much you can do about a crit at that point, honestly. I mean, you can. You can just not scratch the Zigzagoon. Your catch rate on a full HP level 3 Zigzagoon should be really high. It should be about like 50% or something with a Pokeball. Um, so you can just, at the start, if you're in that situation, always just throw the ball. If it's so low level, if it's such a Pokemon, just throw your ball and you're going to be fine. Friends ready to take on the Hoenn region together. Oh, After watching Cedar the weird kid Wally encounter. struggle to catch his first Pokemon, I continued on to Route 104 and found a little Talo in the grass. Talo's great. Aggressive and screams and hungry. Oh yeah, I know your name. In Pedalburg Forest, a Team Magma grunt jumps some random professor, so Ari and Teriyaki peck his eyes out. Oh, hello, Shroomish. I'm gonna name you Onion. I make it to Rustboro, and while getting ready Shroom to take on Roxanne's bad. gym, Teriyaki kills another Zigzagoon I was about to catch. Love What's to see it. What's the problem with Zigzagoons, dude? But it turned out alright, because she also ended up evolving. Onion was able to destroy Roxanne with ease, and we got our first gym badge. Exiting the gym, we catch a glance at Team Magma. So Shroom she actually swept the first gym with Shroomish, which is pretty good. Like, any Grass-type usually at that point in the game, um, if you have a reasonable amount of Grass-type, 
uh, moves should be able to do it. You got recovery on Mega Drain, right? You also got potions available at this point and stuff like that. You should be able to never wipe to this Roxanne fight. It's pretty easy. Ends up to no good again. Something about the scorching earth or something. And this old man exclaims that they stole his Pico. Here's your dog. Also, you're coming with me. The mayor thanks Wismar me by turning garbage. me into his errand boy, and <laughs> so I arrive bad. in Duford to give a letter to Stephen. All right, what do we got? Ugh. Ooh. Okay, you chomps. After Very rare Stephen, encounter. Time to Very rare encounter. Um, I've never used Mawile in like in like Gen three. I would say it's probably pretty bad though. The reason I say Wismer is bad is it gets like no good moves, no good stats. When it evolves, its stats don't become much better either. It's terribly slow. Right now, I'd say the best Pokemon on our team are probably Taylor and Combuskin. Um, everything else. Pretty average so far. Um, Taylor evolves really early, gets really good stab moves. It's really fast, kills the fighting gym. So if you should be able to get most of the game up until like the next rival fight with those two. Take on Brawly, the next gym. Explode's TM move pool is insane. It is. However, you get explode pretty late, and like you you can like farm for like TMs at the casino with it. But other than that, like your coverage isn't going to be amazing. Late game, it's okay though. Um, Xplot isn't terrible late game, that's true. It's just like at this point in the game, it's completely useless IMO. Gym leader. Ari's a stone cold killer and easily earned MVP in that fight. Things were going well. Two badges in and the team is looking good. On my way to the next city, I caught a tentacle on the beach. Good encounter. Very good encounter. Squidward. Why? And after beating Team Magma and Brendan again in Slateport, it was time again to get ready for the gym battle with Watson. But as I was fighting some trainers, Chomps the Mawile got electrocuted a bit too hard and was killed. Damn, Mawile fucking sucks. How underleveled was she? she even like three levels higher than this. Well, Mawile's fucking garbage. A bit too hard and was killed. Jaden, let's battle. I, I want to show you how strong I am. Okay. Ari, this is an electric gym. You're not allowed to fight in here, so... Good idea. You can just wait outside. Actually, though, for, like, more advanced um, ROM hacks, where the enemy moveset is a little bit more diverse, and... Um, or for higher level gyms, sometimes it's actually a good idea to bring a Pokemon that's weak to that gym into it as something called a pivot, right? So you let's say you're in the electric type gym, and you're facing something... Um, that has like an electric type move, but then it also has like another move, right? You probably have a bunch of Pokemon that resist electric type attacks, so they're never really gonna use them. They're gonna use their other more powerful moves. So what you can do is um, you can bait them into using a normal type move, switch in your Talo, which baits them into using an electric type move, and you can switch in your ground type for free. That's one very basic way of using a pivot in a Nuzlocke. While battling the gym trainers, Onion evolved into Breloom, and Hell together yeah. with Teriyaki, they were able to get another victory. The now problem we with Breloom getting getting Breloom early is you don't get Spore early, but um, I mean Spore is really broken. But even without Spore, uh, Breloom can be pretty strong. It has a great typing. Hi, three gym badges in, and no main casualties. With our massive confidence, we decided to take on the Win Straight family's challenge of beating all their family members. Get that I'd macho brace, good idea. To get him some experience, yeah. but we ran into some troubles with Grandma. Uh-oh. Oh god, it's gonna do a high jump kick. We can take him out, but I need a clean switch first. Hmm. Good idea. Excellent idea. So I had to sacrifice Hush Child. Excellent the Whisner, idea. But honestly, that was the safest move to ensure no one else died. Goodbye. Actually, Hush Child. a high level play there. Good job. Part of uh, your skill set as a Nuzlocker is seeing when you need to sacrifice a Pokemon in order to get back ahead in the fight. And realizing which Pokemon is the least valuable and sacrificing it is the best move um, is a good play. And looks like they did that. Good job. You might be missed. While we were heading to Fall Arbor, fighting some trainers, Ari evolved. Oh, look at my big bird. Oh, look at you. Yeah. We were almost to town, but we had to get through the sooty grass on 113. Oh, jeez. Spin right, is, get like, in there okay. The of them. I walked into Meteor Falls. Oh, what was in her teams. box? That's All a right. good question. Um, yeah, none of these Pokemon are too good, honestly. Uh, honestly, if she got that Wurmple early... Dust stocks later on, actually, like in the early game, dust stocks are beautiful. They are pretty okay. Um, although at this point, I probably wouldn't be using them anymore anyway. 
this is a pretty this, these are good Pokemon in box here. Barf, get in there with the rest of them. I walked into Meteor Falls to see Team Aqua and Team Magma arguing about water and rocks. Can I go? So get over here, Zubat. They kept complaining and I had to go. People often complain about getting Zubat encounters in cave. Zubat is actually a fantastic encounter. Um, Zubat is really, really, really good. Crobat, you can get Crobat incredibly early by grinding a little bit of friendship. And uh, Crobat is really strong. It's incredibly fast. It's pretty bulky. It has a very defensive typing. Um, I'm learning some decent moves. Crobat is actually one of the better um, common Pokemon to get in Nuzlocke. Go up the volcano they were blocking to fight Maxi, the Team Magma leader. That was a hard fight. Onion and Teriyaki were able to take out his Mighty N and Camerupt, but nice. his Golbat hit Ooh, hard. Yep. I ended up having to switch in Ari and double team up to win the battle. Ooh. Not the most honorable of strategies. Definitely not. But it worked and we're moving on. On the it way would, down yeah. the volcano, I ran into a matchup. Oh, hello there, Chad. What? You're a female? Did I stutter? We arrived in Lava Ridge Town and started <laughs> getting through Flannery's gym. During that time, Squidward was almost killed by a Munchops fury swag and Kecleon. Fury swags. Oh. Yep, that's gonna oh do a lot. Tentacle's physical defense Stop. is paper. But when it came time to battle, he pulled his weight and more. Honestly, with the team, there wasn't much I could have done to Flannery's fire Pokemon. But Squidward yep. came in clutch by learning Bubble yes. Beam, and it was all over for her. Good Badge shit. four, under our belt. Brendan met up with us outside the gym to give us goggles so we could walk in the sandstorms. Nice. I found a claw fossil, and Anorith was born. Hell you know yeah, mean? brother. Anorith is so fucking cool. I love that guy. What a cool-ass fucking Pokemon. Good choice. So my friend named him Gary. Now it was time for the fifth gym. After some training, Chad evolved into- I get a lot of questions on like how we treat um, fossil encounters as encounters in the Nuzlocke. Um, to me, the most consistent rule set to go with is just to look at where the Pokemon stats say you met the Pokemon at, and that's just the route that you met it at. And if that's the first Pokemon you met in that route, that you caught in that route, then that's your encounter, right? So for Anorith, it would have said Rustboro City, because that's where you revived it. So if you don't have any other Pokemon encounters in Rustboro City, which you can't because there's no grass there, then Anorith is your Rustboro City encounter. Machoke and the team was leveled up. I started the Hell battle yeah. with Ari, and after realizing I was in trouble... Yep. Yeah, That's that not gonna do, do anything. A lot of damage. Uh, I managed to squeak by with more double teams. Ari Good. was barely able to take out the first slacking, so when the second, stronger one came out, I knew I had to use a different strategy. I brought out Onion to leech seed it and try uh -oh. and get more chip damage in, which worked, but he was also killed by slacking's facade, which F I thought boys. he could take. Chad was able to finish off the rest of the fight, but that was the first death that actually hurt. I can understand it. I'm not crying. Someone's just chopping onions in here. But with every down, there's an up. And Corn stepped up and was ready to fill Onion's spot. While passing through Mobile Ooh, again, that Watson one. asked us to help him turn off. Nuzleaf gets like no good moves. <laughs> Nuzleaf is really bad. If you can get a Leaf Stone, you can evolve it. It's like okay, but it's still its move pool is still terrible. I'd recommend against using it the city's generator and while down there i found a magnemite do you want to come with Aww. okay we kept up so magnemite is i would say one of the probably for this game but for most games usually like a top three top five encounter steel typing is incredibly useful electric typing is also incredibly useful both offensively and defensively and Ma even magneton without evolving into magnezone makes really really good use of that magnezone is an amazing poke or magnemite magneton that entire line is amazing for nuzlocke it's really 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 good excellent encounter on our way catching Sperky the Electrike and while fighting some trainers Corn survived two very close calls. He took a Swords Dance boosted Fury Cutter by Ninjas and a, a misclick from me which resulted Ooh. in him tanking a wing attack from a Talo. No 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 Corn no What a god <laughs> Dude, Corn, I'm so sorry. You're such a trooper. <laughs> Good news is Squidward evolved while training, so that's Excellent. neat. We arrived in Fortree City, and this was a gym I was really nervous about. Not only did we not have a good team to take on a flying type gym, but Winona's Altaria is notorious for sweeping teams if she sets yep. up too many dragon dances. Yep. I went to the grass to train up the team, 
and the worst happened. Corn was killed by pin missile from a zigzagoon. Oh, wait, no. Wait, no, no, no. No, no, no. Stop, stop. <laughs> corn. <laughs> Dude, corn, rip. No, corn. You monster. How could you do this? Yep, you gotta know. You gotta know your opponent's learn sets. You gotta know what to look out for. Doesn't hurt to check a little bit before. Nuzleaf. Not only is Nuzleaf's um, learn set garbage, it's also very, very, very frail. So uh, it was only a matter of time that it died to something like this. Honestly, um, let's see what she finds as a replacement. Is this why you kept trying to kill all the zigzagoons? I want to think that Corn sacrificed himself because he knew we were at too much of a disadvantage going into Winona's gym, and by opening up a space, we could get the type advantage we needed to stand a chance. With so this interests me, right? I think a lot of people play Nuzlocke's like this, where they just like kind of run through with the first six Pokemon they get, and um, they never really switch between Pokemon. But like, there's nothing in the Nuzlocke rules that forces you to do that. If you want to do a run like that, you can. But I prefer to do runs where I can actually do team building, right? So for these like harder Nuzlocke's that we do, these uh, hardcore Nuzlocke's that we do, where we don't use items and don't overlevel Pokemon and stuff, um, <clears throat> and we do them against like hard, um, against like hard ROM hacks. Um, we very often switch around our team ex like constantly dynamically between what we need for the next gym, right? Like a, a team that I use for the third gym might look completely different from one that I use for the fourth gym just because we try to optimize our team as much as possible for each gym. The heavy heart, I brought Zip Zap Zop the Magnemite to the team. Good choice. And realized how much more grinding I was going to have to do. I had yep. to fight so many Merrells to get Zip Zap Zop on par with the rest of the team. You want to know how many? The move Thunderbolt can be used 15 times before it runs out. And I had to go back to the Pokemon Center almost six separate times to refill it. Meaning Zip Zap Zop so. killed more than 80 Merrell that were living in that lake. That's actually 160 HP EVs because Meryl gives two HP EVs. So that Magneton is bulky as shit. And, Mag and HP EVs are actually really, really useful on Magneton too because it has low base HP and high base defense. So the HP EVs are more effective. Um, this Magneton is going to be very bulky. Winona led with Swellow, which Zip Zap Zop was able to take out. But she immediately brought out Altaria, which made me very scared because I know she's got Earthquake on yep. that thing. I didn't have a clean switch, and I knew no one on the team could take two hits from this cloud bird. So I ultimately decided that I'd have to have Zip Zap Zop paralyze it in exchange for his death. Goodbye, Zip Zap Zop. You weren't here for long, but your efforts will not be in vi- That's oh the HP, Vs. Zip Zap Zop lived the earthquake on 2 HP like a mad lad. Not somehow, exactly because of the HP Corn EVs you invested. Corn been looking down on us for that Hell one yeah. because there was definitely a 90% chance Zip Zap Zop was supposed to die there. With that string of luck, I was able that was probably to switch Aryan to yeah. Zip Zap Zop She's to right. predict another earthquake and started chipping away at the Altaria, which was not going to be easy. She was already starting to stack up those dragon dances, which make her moves even more powerful, and I was legitimately sweating. I'm but very much enjoying the animation. But what luck we had left, Winona got greedy and tried to get in that last oh, dragon dance, and that's you when love Ari to see was it. able to swoop in and snipe that kill. If you that love to see it. If would have decided to attack at any point, she would have one-shotted anyone and everyone on my team. Thank you, Korn. You shined your photosynthesis onto us. From there, I was able to heal up Zip Zap Zop and sweep the rest of her team. The Good sixth shit. gym badge was ours. Outside the Safari Zone, I found a Duskull I was able to catch. Ooh, I tried to have Gary fun. on the team since resurrecting him from the dirt, but he honestly has, like, no moves that do yep, damage, so I terrible. decided to replace him with Sin. We arrived in Lily Cove, and I tried fishing on the beach for a Pokemon, but Chad punched the Whalmer I reeled up too hard and killed it. We stormed Team Magma's base, and while trying to get the Master Ball they've got on the ground, an Electrode exploded and almost killed Chad, which yeah, was you gotta look out for those. For. After beating their admin, they escaped into a submarine and I went on to fight the next gym. Tate and Liza were the first double battle gym leaders and I did very very hard gym and Emerald even more so in this game probably doable seeing how you only have to fight two Pokemon. Um, picking This is where having Swampert is obviously really really useful or having Sceptile as well. Uh, I would say her team is decently geared to deal with it. Machoke being weak to Psychic and Tentacruel as well is kind of bad but Tentacruel has enough special defense to tank something and like deal a lot of damage with Surf here. 
didn't realize until too late that I was just a tad under leveled for them. Um, they don't have any more than two Pokemon, so I think we should be okay. Oh no no no! Forty-two. Oh no no no! Uh -oh. Sin and Zip Zap Zop made a good duo, being able to confuse and paralyze them. But good Soul shit. Rock managed to get off a Sunny Day powered flamethrower in Zip Zap Zop's face, which totally killed him. Yep. That really sucked. He put in so much work for yeah, the, the team HP and are really not be carried there. us this far. The rest of this fight's for you, Zip Zap Zop. Squidward came out, and together with Sin, we're able to finish off the duo, getting us. There's actually an interesting note for that Magneton. So you know how that earthquake was four times super effective and it didn't kill and the flamethrower was only two times super effective and it did kill. Um, part of the reason for that, the sun boost obviously helps and the being under leveled helps, but part of the reason is also like Magneton just has much higher physical defense than special, right? So one thing to keep in mind sometimes is like the defenses of your Pokemon and the opponent's Pokemon and like not only taking type advantages into mind, but also like, for example, right? This, uh, a, a lantern is going to have higher special defense than defense. Um, so maybe I'd rather use, like, return against it than, like, um, than, like, energy ball, for example, right? Um, that's just, like, something to keep in mind and think about. It's our seventh gym badge. <sighs> All right, Sperky, you're up. Ah, I think I single-handedly wiped out the entire water Pokemon population between Zip Zap Zop and Sperky. I went to Shoal Cave and caught Blubby the Sphiel and went nice. out to take on Maxi one last time. For some reason, I didn't learn my lesson when being underleveled for Tate and Liza because I was even more underleveled for Maxi. Yep, this is the number one mistake that I always tell people to do. And this is why I grind so much on my streams is you have to grind. It sucks, but if you... I mean, you can adjust your rules, um, or you can um, try to do it without grinding and uh, do a little harder. I mean, we don't overlevel the next gym leader, for example, in my rule set, right? But most po most trainers that die that I see wipe in Nuzlocke, it's usually because they didn't grind enough. It's usually the source. Let's see if uh, she does well in this fight, though. My Deanna. It doesn't go down? This fight was rough. Chad it was is. able to it's take out rough. my Deanna, but I resorted to Squidward when his Crobat came out, and luck Ooh. wasn't on my side here because Squidward was killed by a high roll wing attack. The way Pokemon works is there's a small range of damage an attack can do. It's not True. actually the same all the time, and it's kind of based on chance. So even though it looked like Squidward could have lived two wing attacks, Maxi was able to get a low roll on the first one and a high roll on the second. Which yeah, you gotta keep that in mind. Squidward. But it wasn't time to give up. This we is why we always advocate for counting damage, right? But also accounting for that 15% additional that it might deal in... Uh, or I guess it's not 15% additional, but um, that additional damage it could do with the range, right? So if you see it go... If you're still in green, you still might be dead, uh, depending on the values here. We had to persevere for Squidward. Ari came in and took out the Crobat and lived on one HP when hit by Camerapt's rock slide. Damn, it was a tough what a trooper. Battle, but we squeaked by. Barely. After that fight, I needed to take a step back and seriously grind up the team again. Yep. If we were just a bit more underleveled, we would have been murdered. <laughs> Blubby joined the team and we got to work, eventually arriving in Sutopolis. Steven and the Sutopolis gym so leader good. Wallace were there saying Groudon was in the cave because someone used the wrong orb and pissed him off. So I went in there, walked up to Groudon, and masterballed him immediately. There's no way I'm fighting Groudon. Now get in the box. While fighting Wallace, Sperky was able to take out his love disc in Celio. Sin beat his Whiskash, and nice. Chad finished off the Milotic. Good. The team was- Milotic is another one of those examples, right? High special defense, not as high defense. Might want to use, since there's not a lot of super effective attacks against it because it's a water type, might want to use some physical moves against it. It's perfect. And after obtaining our final gym badge, I knew we were ready for the Elite Four. We got through Victory Road. Wally tried to fight us for the last time, but he just needs to stop. We exited really does, the yeah. cave, and there it was. The final challenge. Here we go. Sydney was up first, and honestly, he wasn't a challenge at all. Chad and Teriyaki were able to take care of his team with ease. Phoebe this is where Blaziken comes in really strong. Blaziken does really well against a lot of the Elite Four members. He 
wasn't difficult either with Sin and Blobby being MVPs. Glacio was a bit tougher. Teriyaki was able to take out her Glalies and yep. Sperky could handle her Celios, but her Walrein was the big problem. Walreins are thick, can tank a lot of hits, and can do a lot of damage. I would know because I have one. I brought out Chad and she was able to get in a good amount of damage, but she was ultimately Ooh, killed by Blizzard. This animation. Sin came out to try and confuse it, but it broke through the confusion and landed a Sheer Cold. Yep. Sheer Cold is a one hit KO move. It has a 30% chance of hitting the target and will fail if the target Pokemon's level is higher than the user's. But even under all those conditions, it hit and Sin was killed. Two great team members. Down, down and out. Down Chad two Pokemon and two so left is a really tough situation. So much weight, and Sin got us through some really tough battles. Even with those losses, we were able to finish Glacia off and move on to the final Elite Four member, Drake. Drake's got a tough team, but we've got a Blubby, and she wanted revenge for yep. her fallen comrade. Walrein is she really good for this. Every single one of Drake's Pokemon. Just a straight up massacre. And with that, it was on to the last battle. Steven Stone. I was legitimately nervous. I led with Sperky to take out his Skarmory as quick as possible, and Blubby was able to take out his Claydol and Agron, but nice. then came his Metagross. So Water type does really well in the Steven fight, it takes care of most of the stuff. The Cradley can be kind of hard to deal with. Um, the Metagross is obviously the big problem. Like going into this Elite Four, even building your team before you even step into the fight with Sydney, you need a plan to deal with this Metagross because this has swept many, many in Nuzlocke. This might be the end. Metagross is Steven's strongest Pokemon, so I needed to hinder it as much as I could before it started doing serious damage. I knew as Metagross had Earthquake, which would definitely take out most of my team, so I had- How's the Emerald Wallace fight in comparison? I would say it's easier. Um, preparing for like a- it, 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 It's- mm. The thing is- So like- Preparing for one Pokemon can be easier than preparing for a whole team, um, but not necessarily because, like, if you're prepared to deal with, like, like if you have two Pokemon that deal with water types, you're probably going to be fine on Wallace. He doesn't have anything that's, like, insane, but Metagross can just run away with the game, and Metagross is really hard to counter in Gen 3. It's really hard to find something that deals with this. Had to have Sperky Kamikaze to get a Paralysis off. Blubby came out again, and after a lot of hard work, finally beat the Metagross by spamming Surf. Nice. Teriyaki was able to finish his Cradilly, and his final Pokemon was Armaldo, Gary's final revenge for getting booted from the team. <laughs> I brought out Blobby because Teriyaki was pretty weakened, and after realizing she gets two-shotted by him, Ooh. I knew she was gonna have to die. Armaldo has massive attack, yeah, you gotta be careful. So with a heavy heart, Blobby pulled off her last Surf, getting Armaldo in the red, and was killed. Teriyaki, the Pokemon who's been with us from the start, who's seen her friends die in front of her, the OG, refused to let any more murder happen. Onion, Corn, Zip Zap Zop, Squidward, Chad, Sin, Sperky, Blubby, their zeros and ones won't go down in vain. One good kick to the head, and we did it. We completed nice. the Pokemon Ruby Nuzlocke. So another thing to look for in the Elite Four, especially in the champion battle, is you can play very aggressively and sacrifice a lot of Pokemon because you won't need them afterwards. I mean, obviously you're like attached to them, blah, blah, blah. I understand. But um, if you're if you're looking to win, if you're looking to like step up your game, then that's something to think about during that fight is to play more aggressively and with more tempo and to actually sack Pokemon. Teriyaki and Ari were the only survivors, but the whole team put in a lot of work to get us to number one. A cheers to the true mad lads. Hell yeah. That was a very beautiful animation, and uh, she played extremely well. A lot of advanced plays. It's great. Turns out uh, Nuzlocke's of vanilla games aren't that hard, huh? <laughs> Alright. Uh... See you guys in the next video. I, I can't do outros. I'm sorry. Just subscribe or some shit. Bell, comment, like, whatever. See you guys in the next one. Bye.